Good morning, it's Pastor Bob Grenier from Calvary Chapel here in Visalia, California. The book of 1 John, or the epistle, this short little five-chapter letter, has two basic purposes that are listed for us in the first three or four verses. One of those is that we might fellowship uh, with the Lord. And secondly, that we might have fullness of joy. And so as John introduces his letter, speaking about the eternal nature of Jesus Christ and his wanting to declare to us what he and the other apostles had seen, heard, looked upon, and handled, he said, we're declaring this to you that you might have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So as we go through the letter of 1 John, um, I think it would be very helpful in our personal walks with Christ and your personal walk with Christ to keep in mind that this is actually the primary purpose of God in our lives, that we would have fellowship with the Father. And that word fellowship means to commune, to share, to contribute, to partake in, to participate in. It speaks of intimacy. It's a sharing together. And then the second purpose that he states is that our joy would be full, the fullness of joy. And joy, of course, is that state of mind. It's a delightful, peaceful, happy state of mind. And it is also the fruit of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> love, joy, peace, excuse me. <clears throat> this is spoken of in the book of Galatians in chapter 5. <clears throat> but the purpose, one of the purposes of this letter is that that state of happiness, that joyful, delightful state, would be, we would have the fullness of joy. So we ought to anticipate as we study through 1 John that our fellowship with the Lord is going to grow and that our joy in Christ is going to grow as well. A little bit of background as to um, what John was dealing with as far as being a pastor and trying to protect the flock, teach the flock the truth, and to stand against the false teaching that was making inroads into the church. It's called Gnosticism or the Gnostics. And they believed a number of things. Let me just list them to you very quickly. We'll go over them uh, each week over the next five or six weeks. But uh, one of the things they taught was that knowledge, knowing something, was more important than virtue or how you acted. So in other words, you could, they separated the two. And um, it was okay with them as far as they were concerned to know things, but it didn't really matter how you lived. And then secondly, they took the non-literal sense of Scripture as being uh, not only correct, but also understood only by a select few. In other words, the Bible doesn't really mean what it says, and secondly, only some people who have uh, certain abilities can understand what the Word of God says. Of course, that sounds to me a lot like some of the sentiment that comes from the emerging church today, that when you read the Bible, it doesn't really mean this, it means something else, and uh, only some people really seem to know what it means. Thirdly, uh, they believed that evil in the world precluded God being the only creator. So they couldn't put together the fact that God is the creator, but somehow there was evil in the world, and they were mixed up about that. We'll talk more about that point also in the days to come. And then um, they believed that the incarnation was incredible because in their mind, uh, God could not unite himself with anything material like a human body. They just couldn't put those two together. Thus, they didn't believe that the man, Jesus Christ, was in fact God. And then, this will be astounding to you, they believed that there was no such thing as the resurrection of the flesh. Therefore, they denied uh, the resurrection of Christ. They denied that Jesus Christ was God. 
They also uh, believed that it didn't matter how you acted, it only was important what you knew. So um, they had very, very low ethical standards. So what John does throughout this letter is he emphasizes the reality of the incarnation, that God really did become flesh. And he also emphasized the high ethical standard of the life of Jesus Christ. So for example, here's what he says, that which was from the beginning, which would be, it's a reference to Jesus uh, existing prior to the beginning of all things. The beginning, of course, is recorded for us in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning. And so before the beginning, there was nothing except God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when it says that which was from the beginning, the word was there means was already in existence. So Christ was already in existence before the beginning. And before the beginning, there was nothing but God, which would make Jesus Christ God. So uh, that's astounding. That just that statement is astounding. And I look forward to going through First John with you. I look forward to my own fellowship with the Lord growing. And I look forward to having and experiencing more of the fullness of joy. And I pray those things will happen in your life as well. May God richly bless you. Bye-bye.